This video reviews the post-orthokeratology analysis that you might do with your Medmont E300 corneal topographer. Start by selecting the best baseline map for your comparison or your what's also known as a subtractive map. Choose the map that has the largest fissure area. In this case, this image seems to have an upper lid blocking much of the upper cornea. Find the image that has that largest area of cut coverage, the smoothest contours, and appears to be a normal appearing topography. In this case, we chose the second image and we labeled it baseline. By right clicking, going to categories and selecting baseline, we highlight this as being the pre-orthokeratology map that we're going to use to compare against all future visits. However, with the Medmont composite map function, this is the best way to create a pre-orthokeratology, a baseline map. By having the patient imaged in different fixations, we're able to push the placido across virtually 100% of the visible iris, and that gives us a larger view of the eye shape for an optimal pre-ortho-K topography. Once you've highlighted your best baseline, or in this case, the composite, then we hold down the control key on the keyboard, click on our post-treatment topography. Now we have baseline or pre-ortho-K and post-ortho-K topography, one night in treatment. Then we go up to view and compare. This brings up what's called the comparison map, subtractive map, or also known as a difference map. Here is your baseline, your earlier image. Here is your later image, your post-treatment topography. The larger view on the right-hand side is your subtractive map. Wherever you see blue, you flatten the cornea over time. Wherever you see red, you steepen the cornea over time or between these two visits. First, we'll go to display and then select the axial power interpretation. Axial power relates to refraction. In this case, we can click our cursor in the center and see this patient had a 0.82 diopter myopic reduction or 0.82 diopters myopic treatment. This shows us that the central apical curvature compared to the post-treatment central apical curvature has been changed by 0.82 diopters in curvature, giving us a one-to-one -one relationship in the change in refraction. So this patient had a 0.82 diopter reduction in their prescription. We look at the blue area of treatment and determine where it is in relationship with the pupil. In this case, we can see the green-blue border appears to be vertically well-centered, but ever so slightly temporal. When we refer to the baseline map, we see the green-yellow border of the baseline map seems to be pulled a little bit temporal on this right eye and a little bit inferior. And that's where our treatment zone appears to be decentered as well. So this lens is likely following the natural displacement of the eye. Now let's switch over to the tangential map. Tangential determines the position of the orthokeratology lens in the closed eye environment. We look at this red ring in relationship with the pupil and see it's very close, nasal superior, whereas there's some gap between inferior and temporal. So our lens appears to be riding slightly temporal, slightly inferior. The red ring is created by the reservoir of fluid behind your orthokeratology lens, creating a suction force on the epithelium, pulling on it, creating this elbow, this red area of steepening. The next zone out in the ortho-K lens is the alignment zone, and that creates this blue ring. So we can tell by the red ring and the blue ring where our orthokeratology lens is positioned when the patient is sleeping for that prolonged number of hours wear. So tangential for lens position, axial for treatment zone size, treatment zone position, and refractive change. Now let's go from one night where we have very little effect centrally, more effect peripherally, and go to a few more days of treatment. You know that orthokeratology full effect is seven to 10 days. So after one night, 
such as this case, we may not be getting the full picture. Let's go to the next visit, which is three consecutive nights, and we see on the axial map a blue treatment zone that's begun to fill in very nicely. We've gone from 0.82 diopters central effect to 2.9 diopters treatment. So orthokeratology is beginning to create much more effect as we allow it more time. We can look at the blue treatment zone and say it's positioned itself temporal and inferior of the pupil. In fact, after the third night, we may have just a little bit more decentration of our lens. It might be possible that loosening the alignment zone to bring the lens up might help with vertical positioning. Let's switch over to the tangential map and we see that red ring slightly inside the pupil, nasal superior, whereas it's slightly beyond the pupil, temporal and mostly inferior. So our red ring is indicating a lens writing slightly low and temporal, as well as the blue ring of the alignment zone looking like it's low in relationship with the pupil. So use the axial and the tangential map to determine refractive change, treatment zone position, treatment zone size, tangential map for lens position. If we were to choose a different case, we can choose our baseline, our best baseline map, or ideally we would do a composite, get a little more corneal coverage, hold down the control key, select our post-treatment topography, then again to view, to select your comparison map or your subtractive map, then display, and we'll look at the treatment zone position on the axial map, and we see in this case it's riding high. We also can see the smile of inferior steepening with about one diopter of inferior steepening inside the pupil, so myopic increase inside the pupil, whereas at the center there's about a 1.15 diopter myopic reduction. In this darker blue area, 1.73 diopters myopic reduction. This is your classic smiley face outcome where you see the treatment zone riding high and this big smile inside the pupil. This patient requires a higher sagittal depth of lens or possibly a tighter alignment zone or both. Let's go to the tangential map and confirm lens position though. Tangential is the best way to determine the position of the lens in the closed eye environment. And we see a red ring a millimeter inside the pupil at six o'clock, whereas it's slightly above the pupil at 12 o'clock. The blue ring of the alignment zone where the lens touches itself down on the corneal surface, slightly inside the pupil here, well above the pupil here. So this is a very high riding lens. Clearly we need to modify it by discussing changes to the orthokeratology lens with our lens supplier. So the subtractive map can be used in orthokeratology to understand many things about the treatment. We understand the Rx change on the axial map by clicking our cursor in the center. We can see the position of the treatment zone. We can see the size of the treatment zone. We can switch over to the tangential map and look at the position of the lens in relationship with our pupil with these red and blue rings.